Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. My name is Elvis Tejada and today we're gonna to talk about Aperture. Now, before we get into the video, please like and comment on this video and subscribe to the channel so that we can expand and reach others and help them. Aperture is known as the eyeball of your camera. Now you're probably wondering like the eyeball of your camera. Well, when our pupils dilate, they open up and let more light in. But when they close, they let less light in. And that's exactly what Aperture does. The lower the Aperture number, the more light comes into your camera. The higher the aperture number, the less light comes into the camera. So without even touching ISO or shutter speed, you can dilate the eye of your lens by either closing it or opening it, which would make the image brighter or darker. And today our sponsor guys, if you like this shirt, these guys are called BU Be Real. They have a sale going on right now. They have accessories, t-shirts, jackets, hats, pants, I mean, they feel great, they make you look great. So I have the link down below. Go click on it and go purchase some merch, guys, before the sale ends. Now back to the video. Aperture also introduces this thing called depth of field. When you let more light in, your image has a blurrier background. Let's look at an example. Here, I have my aperture set at 1.4 which on your camera, it would be F 1.4. This is my daughter, we went to the backyard. I had a model, I had to be my subject for this video. You can see that the background is blurred and the only thing in focus is her. Let's take a look at a wider shot. Everything else is blurred out. The only thing in focus is the subject right in front of us, which is my daughter. And again, this is with a lower aperture, more open aperture. Now we have an aperture of 5.8, the image got darker. Now we have a more closed aperture. As you can see, the tree now is in focus. The uh, barn isn't as focused, but it is not as blurry anymore. And also the gazebo. And again, it's not that this looks bad. It's just from a professional point, you would want the blurry background to have your subject as the only thing that is in focus in your image. The lower your aperture, the brighter the image, the higher your aperture, the darker the image, but the lower the more blurry the background is, the higher, the more in focus everything is besides your subject. Now I'm gonna show you another example. I'm gonna lower the aperture in real time. Right here, we have an aperture of F 1.4. You can see again, the background is blurry. The image is pretty bright. As I start to raise the aperture, it gets darker and some of the stuff in the background start to get in focus. And you may think, why would I want a blurry background? And to be honest, you always want a blurry background because a blurry background makes an image look professional. In fact, the ability to get a creamy blurry background is what every filmmaker is looking for. That's why when you buy lenses, the lower the f-stop can go, the lower the aperture can go, the more expensive it gets. Even if it, it is expensive, that means the brighter your image can be. Like we mentioned in other videos, your ISO should be kept at 100 if possible always. And your shutter speed should be double your frames per second to get the realistic look. Now, if we understand aperture, we can mess around with our aperture to get the brightness we need and keep all of those where they should be. This is why aperture is really important. Now you don't have to bump up your ISO to 400 or 800 because your image is too dark or you don't have to mess around with no shutter speed and you can keep it where it should be. Now that you understand aperture, this should help. Now, if you have a massive group of people, I would say to raise your aperture because you don't want, let's just say for example, you have someone in front and someone behind them. You don't want that person behind them to be blurry unless you're going for that look. But if you're trying to capture them all, you're gonna have to raise your aperture so that everybody's in focus. It's the same thing with photography. If you're taking a photo of a landscape, you kind of want your aperture to be higher because you want to have everything in focus that you're capturing. But if you're taking a portrait photo, you would want your aperture as low as possible so that the subject that you have can be the only thing in focus and everything behind it can be blurred. Hope this video helped you guys. We learned ISO, we learned shutter speed, and now we just learned aperture. And in the next video, I'm going to teach you how to juggle all three of them so you guys can get the best exposure and the best depth of field and how all three of them complement each other so again guys please subscribe like share this video comment down below so that we can expand and grow and help others looking to become the next filmmakers and remember guys it doesn't matter if your lens only goes down to 2.8 go out there and create anyways 
Now that you understand all three, you guys know what you need to do. Rather, it's a 2.8 or it's a 1.4, it doesn't matter. You guys know and understand what needs to be done. And if you have any questions, follow us on Instagram, DM us, we can respond as soon as possible or comment down below, we'll be looking to respond to you guys. And I hope this video really helped you guys and I'll see you on the next one.